Only the church can do that. Therefore, because it was a church court, the Inquisition did not execute the death penalty on its own authority, but turned the most guilty over to the state, the secular arm, as it was called, for the punishment reserved for heretics and traitors. These two crimes, heresy and treason, were similarly regarded, though heresy was deemed even worse as treason against God. Every government in Europe in the 15th century punished both treason and heresy by an exceedingly painful death. In Spain, the heretics were burned at the stake. In England, the punishment for treason was hanging, drawing, and quartering. In this ghastly procedure, the traitor was hanged but cut down before he was dead. His intestines were drawn out and he was cut into four pieces, all while still alive. Let us by all means condemn such punishments, but not attribute them to some imaginary unique evil of Spain. The modern world regards heresy as not a crime, but a joke. But the vast majority of the immense slaughters of men, women, and children by totalitarian regimes in our own 20th century have been carried out by men who bitterly hated Christianity and never hesitated to say so. They would not have been free to operate in a time which would have taken them at their word <clears throat> and knew the cost and consequences of such hatred, which many of those condemned by the Inquisition also nourished. Adolf Hitler was an apostate Catholic. Joseph Stalin was an apostate Orthodox seminarian. Between them, they took at least 25 million lives, possibly as many as 40 million. Beside those totals, the grand total of executions by referral from the Inquisition throughout its entire 300-year history is hardly measurable by comparison. A week's work, perhaps even a day's work, for Hitler or Stalin. Thomas de, Thomas de Torquemada would have known how to deal early and decisively with Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin. The great Queen Isabel saw the Inquisition as clearly necessary to preserve the security and to promote the spiritual and social unity of Spain. The enduring cause of the reconquest of the country from the Moors had defined Spain by its Catholic faith in a way matched by no other country, unless by Ireland and Poland, whose nationalities have been largely defined by persecutions of their people's Catholic faith. Because of this history, in all three of these countries up until the last three, few years, to reject the Catholic faith has been to all intents and purposes to reject the nationality. Queen Isabel could trust no Spaniard who pretended to be Catholic but was not. Neither could her people. Such deceivers must be exposed, then reconciled if possible, or forced to flee, or if stubborn and beyond reclamation in their hostility, executed. Isabel did not flinch from ordering their execution, regarding it as her duty. And justice was also the shield of the innocent. Those falsely accused of hidden heresy, of not being genuine Christians, deserved and would receive full vindication from a court uniquely competent to determine whether such accusations were true, whose judgments were accepted as definitive by the great majority of the nation. These considerations were Queen Isabel's justification for establishing the Inquisition. The initiative for its establishment and the determination for its retention were hers. The critics of the Spanish Inquisition, if they have any awareness of Isabel's character, should ask themselves how a woman so good, so honest, and so just could have brought such an institution into being if it were as evil as is commonly thought and the Spanish Inquisition succeeded. It accomplished the task Isabel had set for it. After the death of Torquemada, the great reforming Cardinal Cisneros took over uh, the effective leadership of the Inquisition uh, during the last 18 years of his life, and it continued uh, in his time and afterward to work in the manner uh, that it had during the reign of Queen Isabel. Except in the Kingdom of Granada, after its conquest from the Moors, a separate and special problem, there was no major anti-Christian revolt or treason in Spain during Isabel's reign or for 60 years after her death. 
and whenever there was a religious dispute involving accusations of heresy or occult practices, the Inquisition was available to settle it and did settle it before it became a threat to the church or to the country.